welcome to the final battle of the first set of losers quarterfinals of the FNF Victory Road Draft League Season 2. Now if you don't want any spoilers, I recommend clicking out of this video and going to watch the very first battle, which you could find on my channel or on the playlist. Um, so I'm going to spoil now. The set score is 1-1, one, one, so this is battle number 3. Emberhoof won the first battle, 1-0. 7% left on his last Pokemon. Morgana won the second battle, also 1-0. 1 1% left and Toxic, his last Pokemon. What a close set this has been. This is going to be the tiebreaker. This match will determine who moves on to losers semifinals and who is knocked out of playoffs. This is going to be a very exciting match. So let's jump right in and take a look at the teams and some of the changes that have been made. So we have Z Pokemon on both sides. Tornadus Therian with Z Any. Crocodile with Z Attack for Rio Grande Rapidash. We also have Necrozma with Z Any for Morgana. Additionally, we have Mega Garchomp on Morgana's team. In terms of Pokemon changes, we also have that as well. It looks like um, Hitmonlee has come onto Morgana's team, and Dusclops has come onto uh, Emberhoof's team. And Dusclops replacing Musharna, perhaps as another Trick Room setter. And Hitmonlee replacing Gengar, which is really surprising because uh, I thought that Morgana would bring Gengar. So probably to go for more physical um, attack and maybe to try and outspeed Crocodile after an Unburden. So this will be very intense. Definitely a lot of physical attack power coming from Morgana in this one. Losing Gengar means that his only really strong special attacker, maybe Necrozma, um, is Primarina. So he will have to be careful of that, especially if Dusclops is physically defensive, it will be extremely hard to take down. Uh, I do think that Ember changing to Dusclops was generally a good choice, and Musharna did seem to be a really good option for him. Um, but Dusclops is rather passive, so if Morgana takes that opportunity to set up, he could also turn the, the advantage into his advantage state instead of Dusclops. So, lots going on here. I am really excited to see how this goes. This has been an exciting set so far. So let's jump right in, shall we? All right, let the battle begin. In terms of leads, I'm thinking maybe we'll see a Tornadus Therian lead again coming from Ember from Morgana. Actually, I'm going to guess the same leads as last time, Tornadus Therian and Primarina. This is so intense. We have another set coming right after this one. Necrozma could also be um, a lead for Morgana setting up Stealth Rock. Morgana was pretty lucky adding two fighting types when Musharna was gone. Um, another thing that he's going to have to really be careful of is the fact that Dusclops may have Will-O-Wisp. It's very likely. Um, and he has a lot of physical attackers, so I think his premier switch in to Dusclops is going to be Necrozma, considering not only is it bulky and usually it doesn't care about getting burned, it also has access to Moonlight to shrug off any seismic tosses. So we do have Majin Buu the Torn to Sarian, and we have Blacklight the Necrozma. Last time Necrozma ran a Z-move. Will it run a Z-move again this time is the question. 
Dark Pulse will actually help Necrozma a lot versus Dust Pops, especially hitting on the special side. Um, other Pokemon on his team, of course, can knock off Eviolite from Dust Pops, so that's something Dust Pops has to be worried about. Um, so he does actually have quite a bit of pressure options on Dust Pops if he brought them, such as Dark Pulse on Necrozma. So it looks like Dark Pulse is going to hit Majin Buu, and Stealth Rock is now up for Black Light and Necrozma. No leftovers recovery, so Necrozma very well can be a Z Crystal Pokemon. Having a combination of Dark Pulse and Air Slash, Majin Buu is really well equipped to do a lot of damage to a big chunk of Morgana's team. I'm not sure if Necrozma is going to want to stay in and risk getting hit by another super effective Dark Pulse, bringing it down to one third and possibly being flinched. It does not want to be under that threshold because one more Dark Pulse might be enough to take it down. And with no leftovers recovery, it's going to have to rely on using Moonlight, so if it flinches, that's not good for Necrozma. Stealth Rock is now up on Ember's side, not up on Morgana's side. Garchomp is going to be the one who comes in next. Gunkerton taking that Dark Pulse. It does about 29%, so still decent damage coming out of Tornadus Therian. Of course, after Mega Evolving, Garchomp will be a little bit faster and more capable of doing decent damage as well. Tornadus Therian is definitely a Pokemon that Morgana is going to want to take down as soon as possible because he does have two flying types that don't want to deal with Tornadus Therian at all. So he's going to have to really try and break through Tornadus Therian. Tornadus Therian still looks pretty comfortable, especially since it's decently bulky. It's not very bulky, but it is decently bulky, so I do think it can take a hit from Gunkerton even after Mega Evolving. So there's a the Mega Evolution Hidden Power is going to bring Gunkerton down to 3%, and the Dragon Claw brings Majin Buu down to 36%, but the Leftovers brings it back up to 42%. I was wondering if Hidden Power was going to be on the moveset of Majin Buu, and it does look like it is. We might see a Primarina switch in to take that Hidden Power and then do the rest of the damage on Majin Buu with an Ice Beam. Nothing really wants to switch into Ice Beam except Lantern, so we'd probably see Lantern come in in that moment. Once Tornadus Therian goes down, Morgana will be a lot more comfortable, but it will be hard for him to take down Tornadus Therian, and it looks like Ember has quite a lot of coverage on Tornadus Therian that it's using to its advantage. And another hidden power takes down Gunkerton as the score becomes 6-5 with Majin Buu at 48%, so still able to take some damage and switch out to Regenerator as well. It's not going to want to switch in on Stealth Rock, and it's the only Defogger, um, but Aerith is the next one to come in, and Ice Beam can be rather devastating. We'll likely see Lantern come in to take the Ice Beam. Maybe Aerith will go for the Moon Blast instead, predicting that switch, though. Actually, it's Ghost Magoats, the Dusclops, and Aerith goes for that Moon Blast indeed, doing 38% to Dust Pops. Another Moon Blast will actually do quite a lot of damage. Primarina will have to be careful of Pain Split if Dust Clops carries that, however. A Moon Blast brings down Dust Clops to 9%, and the Trick Room is now up. There are four more turns to this Trick Room. And a Destiny Bond is up! Primarina takes down Dust Clops but goes down as well. That was a very big um, threat to Ember that he really needed to take down. So I think that he 
did a good job with Dusclop setting up the Trick Room. I'm thinking probably Exploud is going to be the next one to come in. Conkledur can be problematic for Exploud if it has an Exalt Vest or if it's minimum speed because it can take out Exploud after that. But Breloom is the next one to come in and Conkledur indeed is the next one we see as well. Breloom probably won't go first with the Spore though. Drain Punch is going to bring Breloom Larson down to 14%, but the Spore is successful and Breloom now at 14%. It looks like Conkledur is always the one who is getting that sleep status put upon it. Dunban still asleep and the Drain Punch this time is going to hit doing 44%. One more turn is left for Dunban to wake up and go first versus this Breloom. Will it succeed in waking up and going first? Mock Punch still might be enough to take down Breloom at this point, but one more Drain Punch might recover Breloom to the point where Mock Punch is not enough to take it down. And it looks like Dunban is still asleep. The Drain Punch is going to bring it down to 6% and bring Breloom Larson up to 58% after the Life Orb. Dunban's only hope right now is to go for the Mock Punch or to switch out into Necrozma. And Dunban did wake up, goes for the Mach Punch, brings Breloom down to 14%. The Drain Punch is going to do enough to bring Dunban down to uh, 0%. And the score is now 5-4 with Breloom barely hanging on at 8%. Jules the Hitmonlee is the next one to come in, but it does have to be careful of Spore. But actually, Jules is able to go first. The close combat causes it to... Um, take out Breloom, and now it has Unburden activated after the close combat drops go away from the White Herb. It is looking really threatening right now. Lantern can still threaten it with a Scald Burn, however, so that is something to take into consideration. Score is 4-3. Jewels will outspeed everything at this point, I think. Lantern still does look like it could be a big problem. It doesn't want to take a close combat from Hitmonlee, but it can, I believe. Especially since Hitmonlee doesn't have the attack boost from the usual set, Curse White Herb. There is a possibility that Hitmonlee has Earthquake as well, and that could be troublesome for Lantern, but we did see Lantern run Air Balloon in the first two matches, so it very well could run Air Balloon again in this match too. I think Morgana pretty much wants Hitmonlee to stay out so it could outspeed Hitmon, uh, sorry, Crocodile. So Majin Buu comes in, Jewel's probably going for a Rock Slide or Stone Edge. It will outspeed Majin Buu, but will it be able to take it down is the big question. Stone Edge hits and it is enough to take down Majin Buu as the score is now 3-3. Three, three. In comes Liability, the Crocodile. But Jules may still outspeed it because of that Unburden boost. Indeed it does. Close Combat takes down Liability and the score is now 2-3. Hitmonlee has been able to turn this around. And Exploud comes in. I'm really curious as to why Ember is not bringing in Lantern. The Close Combat takes down Exploud as well as Lantern is the last Pokemon standing. Jules Vern the Lantern at 88%. Jules the Hitmonlee goes for the Close Combat. It brings Lantern down to 40% and Lantern's now able to do some big damage on Jules. Scald brings it down to a whopping 30% and also burns it. So Lantern may be able to take down Jules. Close Combat brings Lantern down to 17% as Lantern goes for the Scald and takes down Jules. Score is now 1-2. And in comes Jet Setter, the Zera Aura. The Close Combat is enough to take down Lantern, and that is the game. It's a 2-0 victory for Morgana's team, Northern Necrozma's 
over Emberhost team, Rio Grande Rapidash. 2-1 set score. What a set. It does look like Morgana's um, switch to Hitmonlee was really effective for him, especially after that unburdened boost, outspeeding everything, and close combat being a really good typing in this. Once Dusclops went down, Hitmonlee was able to go to town. Um, Lantern, I think, could have been a switch in to Hitmonlee. If it used Scald, he could have saved Crocodile and um, Exploud, because after a burn, um, they actually might have been able to live a close combat. I'm not sure. But it was a really good match, really good set, really enjoyable. And both of these trainers definitely showcasing that they really deserved their slot in playoffs and they worked hard to get there. So it does look like Morgana is going to be moving on to the losers semifinals match of playoffs. And Emberhoof uh, was knocked out of playoffs, but he did show that he definitely put up a great fight and he has improved so much since last season so really enjoyable set thank you so much for watching and tuning in we have another set of losers quarterfinals coming to you now so stay tuned for that until then this is noel from sun and friendly